Neptune is officially the final planet. Um, and oddly enough, it's more exciting than Uranus. When we got there, which was in 1989, I was over in California with a team. We were making a television program, which I was presenting. And we were looking at the images that were coming in. And we were standing baffled at a television screen. And we said to the scientists, what's going on? What is this thing, this blue object, this blue gas giant with a great big spot on it? He said, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. Um, so it is quite an active planet. It's actually warmer than it should be. Nobody knows why that should be. And it's got a moon going around it called Triton, not to be confused with Titan, which is actually the coldest object in our solar system. But it's actually got active ice volcanoes on its surface, which produce plumes of dark, sort of, basically sort of crud. Very, very unusual. Nobody knows what on earth's going on. That's an interesting system. When Holst came to compose Neptune, the last of the planets, he found that what he wanted to portray was a kind of a, a kind of distance, as though somehow you were tapping into something which was way beyond your grasp and, and reach. For this purpose, he obviously was influenced by some of the sounds like Debussy and Nuage, the wordless women's choir, the fact that it's pianissimo all the way through, the fact that it's suggestive of a world beyond your imagining. One of the most extraordinary things about the planets in all, and particularly about Neptune, is the way that Hull's not just content with what the orchestra could do, and the wonderful range of sounds he gets into it, but also some of the special effects, which had to be got by, by different means. One of them, of course, is a choir uh, of women singing just a wordless choir in the distance. And to achieve the decrescendo to the middle of nowhere, doors were closed. You don't have to do it like this. I mean, he specifies it, and you could do like a fade you might get electronically or on the television or something. It, as it were, disappears into nowhere. And the best way you could get that is basically cutting them out of the picture. He calls it mystic, uh, in the sense that this was knowledge beyond what I could learn and know, but somehow is out there, perhaps beyond my reach, and suggestive of being beyond its reach. It sort of disappears beyond my grasp, right at the end, so that it ends in nowhere, and I am left, maybe confused at the end. 